Hello everyone, welcome to my session. This is Gavin Shen, currently working for Red Hat as a software engineer. Today I'm going to talk about the synchronous page fault and SDS virtualization support for ARM64. Here's an overview. I'm going to talk about the motivation where we need the synchronous page fault and the current status of the feature and then the general requirements of the feature. After that, I'm going to talk about the synchronous page fault and SDR virtualization implementation on ARM64. Then I will present the performance and come to the conclusions. Because the feature is a current developer, de developer I need some support from the community to review my code. About the motivation, generally speaking, the asynchronous page fault improved guest parallelism significantly by rescheduling other process for execution in the guest, where the host resolve the state to page fault. Besides in the scenario of uh, live migration, the guest performance benefit from the feature either. The feature may be used by other purposes. For example, it is used by the virtual LFST to relay fees as from the host to the guest. The feature was introduced to x86 initially around 2010. And the virtual FSD used the asynchronous page fault to relay fees error from the host to the guest on x86. And the feature is supported for S390, which is one of the IBM's architecture. But unfortunately, it's not available on ARM64 yet. So we need to do something to support the feature for ARM64. About the, the general requirements, so there are two passes, data pass and the control pass. The data pass is driven by two notifications, which are page not present and page ready. The page not present notifications are sent from the host to the guest before the state to page fault is to be resolved. When the guest receives the page now present notification, the guest start to reschedule other process other than the folding process for execution. In the meanwhile, the state to page fault is being resolved on the host side. At a later point, when the state to page fault is resolved successfully on the host side, another notification which is page ready is sent from the host to the guest. When the guest receives the second notification, it reschedules the previous 14 process for execution. There's still another data broker in the, in the data pass, which is shared between the host and the guest. The shared data broker is updated to distinguish the notification and is also used to identify the specific as a synchronous page fault by a unique token. In the control pass, the control data block is used to help to uh, finish the configuration and the live migration. This is the general requirement. So what's the particular requirement we need to support the feature of ARM64. I would like to compare the situations we have on x86 and ARM64. First of all, on, on x86, the page vector 14 is used to deliver the page not present notification. But the same mechanism is not available on ARM64 because we have a very limited space in the ES underscore E01 system register, 
this is just as used to tear the root cause of the page fault. So the SDA, which is a software dedicated exception interface, is leveraged to deliver the page not present notification on ARM64. Apart from that, the interrupt is uh, still used to deliver the page ready notification, which is quite, is quite similar to what we are doing on x86. The shared data block is updated on ARM64 to, to distinguish the notifications, which is exactly the same to x86. On ARM64, the control block is accessed by the SMCC, which is a secure monitor call calling convention to configure the single page fault. But on x86, the email MSI is used for the same purpose. Besides, the control block is also accessed by the actual command from the user space in order to support the rep migration on ARM64. However, on x86, we don't need this functionality because the emulator MSI can be migrated naturally. So let's take a look how the synchronous page fault is working on the ARM64. At the beginning, when the QMU starts, the QMU uses the octo command to configure the asynchronous page fault. There are two, thousand, two types of information need to be configured, the SDR event number and the interrupt number. After that, the, the, the guest boots up, the guest start to use the SMCC interface to enable the asynchronous page fault in step two. At a later point, to sum up the running process in the guest, trigger the state to page fault, the guest trap to the host. This time, the host send the first notification, which is the page not present in step four to the guest. When the guest receives the page not present notification, the guest is going to acknowledge the notification and start to reschedule other process other than the folding process for execution in step five. At a later point, when the stage two page fault is resolved success successfully on the host in step six, another notification page ready in step seven is sent to the guest. When the guest receives the second notification, the guest is going to acknowledge the notification by rescheduling the previous 14 process for execution. So until now, the asynchronous page fault is complete. It's a lot what the control data block is updated when the synchronous page fault is configured. But the shared data block is updated when the page not present and page ready are delivered and acknowledged. And we need to support the migration of a synchronous page fault. The migration is quite simple to use the octo command to retrieve the state of uh, asynchronous page from the source VM and restored on the destination VM, which means we just need to migrate the control data block. For the shared data block, we don't need to migrate because all the pending asynchronous page fault are canceled before the migration starts. So as we mentioned before, the SDI is leveraged to deliver the page not present notification in order to support a single page fault. So let's explain what's SDI. 
The SDI is the abbreviation of Software Dedicated Exception Interface, defined by then W054A specification. The specification can be downloaded from the link. General rates provides a mechanism for registering and servicing system events from the hypervisor. The interface is offered by the hypervisor to the guest OS. The service is delivered with a SDI event. The SDI event is identified by a unique event number. The SDI event is delivered to the guest immediately regardless of the guest state. It's not maskable by the IRQ underscore disable or similar functions like that. So in this regard, it's quite similar to x86 NMI. Apart from that, the SDI events are classified two types, which are shared and private events. The shared events is owned by multiple APEs and delivered to one of them. The private event is only visible and owned by one PE. Again, the private SDI event and interrupt used by a synchronous page fault to deliver the page not present and the page read notification. And the SDI is working based on the SMCC. So I would like to explain what's SMCC. So SMCC is an abbreviation of a secure monitor call calling convention defined by then W0 to AD. The specification can be downloaded from the link either. It basically defines a common calling mechanism to be used with a secure monitor call, SMC, or hypercall HVC instructions. The HVC instructions are used to generate exception which is handled by a hypervisor running in exception level two. The arguments and the return values are passed in the general purpose register X0 to X17. The service is identified by the arguments carried in the general purpose X0. So the value carried in X0 is divided into a several fields. One of the fields is used to identify the function, it's called function ID, to identify what the function the guest wants the hypervisor to provide. So for the SDI, it's false in the category of SMC's standard service calls whose function ID is a four. So let's take a look at how the SDI is working. In the diagram of a left side is the system level behavior. When the guest boots up or when the driver is going to be loaded in the guest, the guest retrieves the version from the host to check the version is valid or not. After that, the private and short reset is issued to the host. So that purpose pending events can be reset or cleared. After that, the guest issues the PM mask command to the host to start receiving the SD event from the host on the calling vCPU or PE. Eventually the guest need to, to be shut down and uh, the guest issued the PE mask command to the host. The PE mask command stops the guest from receiving any further SDI even from the host. So this is its system level behavior. For one particular event, I mean the SDI event, as, as, as we can see from the diagram of the right side, the guest need to issue get info to retrieve the specific information about the SDI event, and then to register an enabled event. After that, the guest is able to receive the SDI event from the host. When the guest 
needn't the event anymore. It issued disable and and register command to the host. So for one particular SDI event, how is it delivered? First of all, when the host received the event, in the step one, the host need to save the calling set. It includes the general purpose register X0 to X17 and the PC and the P state. And then the event is delivered to the guest. The event handle, which was provided when the guest, when the SDI event was registered, is invoked. When the event handle is going to complete, one of the two command either complete or complete and resume is issued to the host. To tell the host the SDI event has been handled success successfully. But there is one difference between the two commands. The complete and the resume scheduled pending interrupt immediately, but the complete does not do that. So that's, a, that's how the SDI is working on ARM64, and the asynchronous page is supported on ARM64. So about the performance, the first scenario is the, is the a performance in the heavy swapping element. I have a test program written by myself. The test program is read to the all available memory. In the meanwhile, there may be one calculation thread maybe running or not. The VM configuration always has a one vCPU and the memory is a one giga. And the QMU process has been put into the C group two, where the memory limitation is enforced to have 512 megabytes. The first scenario as we show in the top set of the benchmarks, the calculation thread is not running. But uh, five more percent time is needed to finish the job because of the overhead introduced by asynchronous page fault. As we mentioned before, the asynchronous page fault need to deliver two signals. The delivery of those two signals incurs some overhead. In the in the bottom side of the benchmarks. The calculation thread is running. You can see about 40% less time is needed to finish the job. So we can say the asynchronous page for the instant pros, the guest performance in terms of a parallelism. Another performance we need to observe the uh, maturity is about the live migration. So still we have the same configuration as before, the vCPU is one and the memory is then with the one giga, but this time we don't enforce any memory limitations through the group to the QMU process. And uh, on the top side of the benchmarks, the calculation thread is not running, but about 3% to 6% the next time we needed to finish the job. Because the improved in activities by asynchronous page helps to decrease the page dirtying rate and the post copy requests. In next thread, I will provide more data about, about the page date, date rate and post copy request. The bottom part of the benchmarks is a, is a scenario where the calculation rate is running. The time is used to finish the job is almost the same, but the more 
calculation capacities is offered when the synchronous page fault is enabled. In terms of the calculation capacity improvement, about 41% and 68% is improved. So here we have uh, more data about the performance in the scenario of uh, migration. So on the left the two columns, where the calculation thread is not running. So you can see when the synchronized page folder is enabled, the time is uh, needed to finish the job is dropped from 9.1 second to 8.8 .8 second. The right two columns where the calculation thread is start is running and the time is needed to finish the job is almost the same. But uh, when the synchronized page vote is enabled, more calculation capacity is, uh, is provided. So from the number, is the, ca the calculation capacity is increased from 1,684 million to 1,781 million. So, the synchronous page fault offers more calculation capacity during the live migration. So eventually we come to the conclusions. A synchronous page fault is a significantly beneficial to the guest parallelism or interactivity. According to the benchmark we had, 40% improvement of the parallelism in the heavy swapping scenario. Besides, it's also beneficial to the guest performance in the period of a post copy level migration. About 41% to 68% more calculation capacity is offered by the asynchronous page fault. So, the feature is currently under development. All the code has been um, posted to the mail list. You can find it from below links. And all the code also has been also update, uh, uploaded to the GitHub. You can also check out from the GitHub. I really hope someone from the community can and take a look on the code to start the real code so that the feature can be merged in time. Thank you very much. This is today's session. If you have any more questions, feel free to contact me through email. My email can be found from the slide one. Thank you.